I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Hey, if you've never subscribed to this podcast, just push the little red button right there to get consistent teaching tools and tips to help you live your dreams. In fact, today I want to talk about how to achieve your goals, your life goals, faster. You know, they say a goal without a plan is just a wish. Well, I want to show you how I've learned to achieve my goals and how you can apply these simple steps to achieve yours this year. Number one is you have to write your top 10 goals. You know, the Bible says in Habakkuk 2.2, it says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets that Everyone who passes by may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastens by. Now, that's the amplified version. Well, to me, that sounds like a vision board. So, you know, I always tell people, and you may have heard this on other podcasts, how I like to imagine it's the last day of this year. It's December 31st, and you just think about what you want to have accomplished over the next 12 months, what you accomplished the previous 12 months. Now, here's the thing. Thinking precedes achievement. Nobody just stumbles upon success and says, wait, how did I get here? No, you have to think about what you want to accomplish this year. And what I like to do is actually write them in the past tense as if I already achieved them. So I like to imagine it's December 31st. And for example, you might say, I lost 15 pounds, or I went on my dream trip to Honolulu, Hawaii, or I saved $5,000, or I got a $5,000 raise, or if you're, you have a dream to write a book, you would say, I finished my manuscript. So write the vision. Number two is add images to match your goals. See, adding images to your goals increases your desire to achieve them. And here's why. Your mind thinks in pictures. It doesn't think in words. So when you see your goal, it elevates your desire to reach it. So referring back to your list of top 10 goals for this year, I like to go through each one, one by one, and research images. Just look online, look in magazines that illustrate each of your goals. Now, for illustration purposes, let me just say, let's pretend that part of your top 10 goals on your vision board could say this. Goal number one, save $5,000. Well, if I were you, I would do just like we did here, print out a picture of cash and then write the vision, make it plain. Like the Bible says, clearly type or write across the the photo, save $5,000 by December 31st. That's making the vision plain, isn't it? Or let's say you have a goal to go to the Bahamas or Florida or wherever. You could put a picture of you in a bikini (laughs) or not. (laughs) <laughs> put a postcard or a printout of the Bahamas or Florida, whatever it is, the resort you desire to stay at, the excursions you want to take, and then do the homework. Research the cost to achieve this goal. You could start listing how much the flights cost, the hotels, the meals, the excursions, your spending money. See, that's writing the vision and making it plain. So you would say vacation in the Bahamas by July 31st, $7,000. That's getting a crystal clear picture of what you need to attain, right? Goal number three, let's just say, for example, you want to purchase new dining room furniture. Instead of just always saying, I wish we had dining room furniture. Man, I wish we could upgrade our furniture. No, research the furniture you desire. You could browse online. You could look through magazines. You could go to the furniture store. Take a picture of you sitting at the dining table as if it's yours. Put that photo on your vision board. Do it real quick while nobody's watching. Put it on your vision board and just act as if it's already yours. Research the cost and do what the Bible says. Write the vision, make it plain. So you would say, purchase new dining room furniture by Thanksgiving Day, $3,300. Let's say you have a goal to pay off your car. Well, you could take a victory photo of you standing by your car with your hands up celebrating your debt-free car. Call the bank. Find out the balance remaining and then write the vision, make it plain. You would say, I am driving a debt-free car of $7,436.08 by September 30th. See, that's answering the questions, how much and by when? How much do you need to pay off and by when? So now I recommend that you keep it as neat as possible. See, when we get too many items on our vision board, it kind of starts looking like a snapshot of confusion. Now, personally, I prefer to have giant numbers attached to each of my goals for the year. So I have a vision board at my house and a vision board at the office for all of my business goals, but then one at the house for the personal and family goals. Because a lot of times people ask me, how many vision boards do you have? I have two. 
Now, I like to keep them separate like that. Now, I was listening to a story recently about this woman named Sharon who, she said she was at home one night eating pizza. (laughs) And she said she was learning all about vision boards. Well, as she's learning this, she got so excited about vision boards and she just made this declaration. She said, the next time I eat pizza will be at 1 p.m. in Venice, Italy on May 1st. May 1st was her birthday. Now, this lady really loved pizza, so that was a huge sacrifice to say, I am not going to eat any more pizza until I'm eating it in Venice on my birthday. And this was a big dream. She started telling people, and they thought she was crazy. But she just knew in her heart, it's going to happen. So she built a vision board of the canals of Venice, photos of the hotel she wanted to stay at. Um, She put all kinds of stuff, pizza, pasta, all kinds of Italian stuff. And she started getting focused on that vision board. Well, this is amazing. Long story short, in January of that year, she planned to start going. She started saving money, getting ready to go. Somebody she met earlier heard about her vision board and her desire to go, decided to give her a trip to Venice with no strings attached. Now, here's the other thing. Then the hotel that she really wanted to stay at that she had on the vision board, it was booked solid for a conference coming. But she just kept believing. She kept calling back. Two weeks later, they called and said there's a room cancellation, and she got the very room she wanted at the hotel on the vision board. (laughs) Everything on her vision board came true. What am I saying? If this will work for a woman just wanting to eat pizza in Italy, (laughs) it'll work for somebody wanting to impact lives and reach your goals that you know are going to change your life. So get serious about it. Number three, focus on one at a time. You know, Dave Ramsey says there's power to focus. He says if you don't focus on something, nothing gets done. Well, he says money's the same way. When you try to focus on 16 different things at once, nothing happens. In fact, Dave Ramsey says we're so crazy, we tell people, stop doing anything with money except paying your minimum payments. Stop the 401k temporarily. Stop saving money temporarily. He says let's do one thing at a time and totally focus all of your energy on that one thing, then you can move on. For example, if you've written down three big financial goals, well, in order to achieve any of them, you must get focused on one at a time until it's accomplished. So if you've listed financial goals such as save $10,000 by December 31st, eliminate credit card debt of 7,000, or pay off my student loans of 3,000, well, what you have to do is focus on one at a time. Which one do you allocate all your time, energy, and resources to? The smallest one. You focus on eliminating the smallest debt first. So your major goal in that story would be pay off the student loan of $3,000. You know, I remember years ago, I had my top 10 goals for the year, which included three different books on my heart that I wanted to write, and I was equally passionate about all of them. Well, I, you know, I was getting so frustrated because I had all these desires to write this book, But because I wasn't focused on one project at a time, I was consumed with stress, frustration, anxiety, because none of them were complete. I had three half-written books affecting nobody. (laughs) Finally, I had to eliminate the distraction of the two other books and focus on one single manuscript until it was completed. Once I finished it, sent it off to the publisher, then I could move on to the next manuscript. So focus on one at a time. Number four is look at it every day. The more you look at it, the more compelled you are to check it off. So I want to challenge you. You know, they say, keep your goals out of reach, but not out of sight. Keep it in front of you. And number five is build your faith. Build your faith. See, what you achieve isn't nearly as important as who you become as you're working on your goals. Here's the truth. As you're working on your goals, the goals are working on you. So you got to keep your faith built up. You know, successful people never stop growing. In fact, I wanted to read this to you real quick. This is from a sweet girl named Amanda, and listen to what she said. She said, greetings to you from Sri Lanka. She said, I've been listening to your messages for about nine months now. I thought I must share my testimony with you of how God has used you to impact my life. That's a blessing. She said she lost her father this year to a very rare brain condition. He suffered a lot and ended up dying. His death shook her faith, and she started questioning everything. How could God let this happen to a man of God who loved him and served him for so many years? She said, I was so depressed, and I was moving away from God. 
Then when I accidentally watched one of your podcasts on YouTube, I continued to listen to your teachings and the Lord touched me and opened my heart. I was able to forgive myself and those who hurt me and receive God's love. That's awesome. Then she said this, your teachings about living and achieving your dreams really inspires me. I follow everything you say about having a vision, a vision board, writing it down, confessing it, and listening to God's word. As she said, I was looking for a job desperately after my father passed. She said, I was not having any luck with it. So I started praying, as you said. I wrote down specifically what kind of job I wanted, the location, the working environment, the salary, what kind of co-workers she wanted, and the type of boss she wanted. That's specific, isn't it? She said, I prayed and thanked the Lord for what I wanted according to His will. And in a few weeks, I got exactly what I prayed for. Praise God, she says. This is one of many testimonies to come. Love, Amanda. Isn't that awesome? So I'm telling you, God honors that. So the first step toward going anywhere is to decide you're not going to stay where you are. And setting goals is how you get there. Earl Nightingale said this, people with goals succeed because they know where they're going. Les Brown said this, I'd rather aim too high and miss than aim too low and hit. So I wanna challenge you, dream as big as you can and God will go beyond that. In the summer of 2018, I did the very opposite of what I tell you to do in going after your dreams and goals. And it almost cost me a huge mistake, a lifetime mistake. I'm gonna show you how to avoid it. Hey, I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Not too long ago, my husband Rodney and I were out looking for land to build our dream home. We live in a lake community and my ultimate dream house is to live on the lake. So we drove around looking for property to either buy a house on the lake or build a house. I wanted to buy, he wanted to build. Well, we could not find one single house for sale on the lake and there aren't hardly any lots left to even build on the lake, very few. So Rodney found this one lot and he took me to go check it out. Well, I can't complain. It was gorgeous. It's lakefront property, sort of on a tiny hill or an incline. And I remember pulling up to it and the neighborhood is adorable. I mean, there's very few houses on this little street. It's so cute. I guess you would call it quaint. Well, when I looked at the lot, I was thinking, well... I mean, it's different than what I would have pictured. It's just sort of like open land, no trees like at all, really no privacy. It's in between houses, just kind of out there. But it's amazing. Like I said, you can't complain. It's beautiful. Well, we even drove his truck up on the land and we just sat there looking out at the water, just imagining our dream home, visualizing living there forever because this is going to be our final home. We even joined hands and prayed and asked God for wisdom and for favor on this land if it's for us, and we made an offer. Suddenly, we got a phone call that they accepted the offer. We didn't have papers drawn or anything, but we were squealing about this. I mean, they accepted the offer. I mean, I was squealing. Rodney doesn't squeal. But we were so excited. Now, keep in mind, I haven't been real keen on building because it's just so much work. I don't have time for that, right? But Rodney wants to build. And he was telling me that we could fix the shortfalls, like, you know, we can make it private by putting a fence up. We can add trees to make it a little more warm and not so open land, you know, all these solutions. Well, one day in prayer, I literally heard this in my spirit. I heard the Lord say, I'm not the God of close enough. I'm the God of all that you desire plus more than enough. Let me repeat that because I wrote it in my journal. He said, I'm not the God of close enough. I'm the God of all that you desire, plus more than enough. And I started thinking, this land is close enough to our ultimate dream, but it's not the true dream, the ultimate dream. So here's where I messed up and I did the very opposite of what I tell you to do. I was vague about my dream house. You know, I put a photo on my vision board of the lakefront property and that was it. Well, that can mean anything. I mean, this is lakefront property. This is technically lakefront property. So in prayer, I just felt the Lord was asking me, 
what is your ultimate dream? You know, you say this isn't the ultimate dream, then what is the dream? So I started writing it down like I've always pictured. A long, windy driveway, tree-covered land, a private entrance, you know, land to landscape, a house close to the water, a French house like a chateau style, you know, and on and on. What was I doing? getting crystal clear on what I truly desired in my dream home. And are you ready for this? Two days later, we found our ultimate dream. We suddenly found a guy who had 25 acres for sale and was willing to you know, divide it up and sell eight acres to us. Get this, it has room for a long, windy entrance. It is tree covered. We can build close to the water. Embrace yourself, you ready for this? This eight acre dream property costs less than the one acre of land that was close enough to the ultimate dream. Here we are at our new land, getting the dirt poured and leveled out to start building our dream home. We're even having to clear out some of the trees because there are so many. We're putting in a gigantic pond to landscape and make our little dream land. You know, I call my husband Rodney Fishing Rod because he loves anything to do with fishing. But what am I saying? God is not the God of close enough to your dream. He's the God of all that you desire plus more than enough. But you need to be very specific about what you dream. Don't be vague. Don't just write, I want a lot of money by December 31st. See, your faith doesn't know how to believe for a lot. What does a lot mean? Is it $500? Is it $5,000? Write your goals as detailed as you can. It could be, I saved $10,000 by December 31st. Well, that means you need to save $834 each month or $192 each week. See, God is the one who said, write the vision. Yes, but he also said, make it plain. Now, let me remind you that he's the one who said in Ephesians 3.20, he's able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to his power that works in us. So that dream, you know, that tug on your heart, it's there for a reason. God's trying to say to you, step into this. Dream that big. Get crystal clear on what you truly desire. Let me just tell you, it does not intimidate God. So let me give you three steps real quick. I wish I had time to teach my seven-step checklist for success, you know, but I wanted to focus on one today. But I do want you to have all seven, the entire checklist, so you can just sort of go down the list and make sure you're applying them in your life. Just click the link in the description and get that free download right now. Again, it's the seven-step checklist for success. So real quick, number one, Visualize your future. Sit quietly with God and just imagine. Imagine your life one year from now or five years from now. Clarity comes from questions. If you could live your ultimate life, what does it look like? Where do you live? What do you drive? Where do you work? How much money have you saved? What are you happy you did? Where have you gone? You know, what would make your situation better? Or even what needs to change in your life? What does your body look like? You have to see the end from the beginning. Number two, write it down. We've talked about that. Make it very plain. And number three, keep it before your eyes. Make a vision board. You know, why is it so important to keep it in front of your eyes? Well, the law of attraction basically states that whatever you focus on, you will attract it in your life. Proverbs 23, seven says the same thing. Whatever man thinks in his heart, so shall he become. So what you think about, you bring about. Bottom line, we move towards what we consistently see. So again, I wasn't able to give you my entire seven-step checklist for success. I did give you point number four, get crystal clear on what you want. Now, I want you to have all seven, so just click the link in the description and get that free download right now. And remember, dream as big as you can, and God will go beyond that. And I'm cheering you on to live your dreams. I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Hey, if you've never subscribed to this podcast, just push the little red button right there for consistent teaching tools and tips to help you live your dreams. Today, I want to talk about the number one skill to achieve your goals. I'm absolutely convinced this is the number one skill. Now, according to statistics, nearly 50% of Americans make New Year's resolutions, yet only 8% are successful in achieving their goals. 8%. Well, typical goals people set, and you may identify with this because I know I used to, is this is what they sound like. Get healthy, get organized, live life to the fullest, 
learn new hobbies, spend less, save more, travel, read more, get closer to God, things like that. Now, I hate to say that most of the time, New Year's resolutions don't work. Listen to this. 30% of people who set New Year's resolutions quit after the first week. Not the month, the first week. 60% of people quit after six months. Now, only 5% of those who lose weight keep it off. I know, that's sad to hear. 95% gain it back, and a significant percentage even gain back more than they originally lost. Now, I promise I'm a motivational speaker, (laughs) but the truth is, the problem with these goals and the reasons they go unachieved year after year is that they're just too vague. In fact, statistics show that we tend to set the exact same goals 10 times with no success. And many times, they're just thoughts in our head and not plans on paper. When See, when we don't define what we truly want, the goal remains just a wish. So clarity is one of the single most important keys to success. And what I mean by that is when you literally grab a pen and paper and you get crystal clear on your goals this year by writing them down, you have just elevated your chance of achieving it by 42%. 42%. See, writing your goals is the number one skill to achieving them. You know, you may have heard of Grant Cardone. He has done this for years. He said it's great for, you know, staying focused and keeping on track. But Grant Cardone said he started writing his dreams and goals down in the very beginning. I'm talking about the night he returned from drug rehab years ago before he became this successful, you know, salesperson. Well, he started writing them down in order to get his life focused on what he wanted to create. Now he said he writes them down every day, first thing in the morning. Now listen to this. When he started doing this 20 years ago, this is what he said. He would write down, I own 20 apartments or more. At the time, he said he hadn't even bought one apartment and didn't know anything about apartments or financing. He said, I was completely clueless. I had no idea how I was going to accomplish the goal. Still, I wrote it down and looked at that vision every day for years. Well, almost five years later, he made a real estate deal for 48 units in Vista, California. He said, boom, a goal I had been obsessed with was achieved. Think about that. You know, now he said he writes them down faithfully every morning and every night. Well, today, Grant Cardone, he owns almost 5,000 apartments worth $400 million. (laughs) I think there's power in writing the vision and making it plain, don't you? And of course, this came from God's word. It didn't come from Grant Cardone. It didn't come from me. God's the one who said, write the vision and make it plain. So be specific about what you want to achieve and write it down. When you write your goals down, it forces you to clarify what you really want. See, it's no different than saying you're going on a vacation with no location in mind. How do you pack? Which flight do you catch? Which route do you drive? See, when you have goals, you are pinpointing your destination and then you're making plans to reach it. See, when you know where you're going, it motivates you to start taking action. It also helps you stay focused when exciting distractions come your way and try to get you off track because that will happen. For example, when you set a financial goal, you know, not just save money, but instead you you write down to save $1,200 this year. And you know that means you must save $100 every month. Well, let's say someone invites you to a concert that costs $100. You say, no, I have a very firm goal to save $100 a month. See, you filter out the distractions when you have a clear written goal. Now, real quick, one of the ways you can stay focused and committed to your goals is by asking why. Why do you have this goal? Why do you want to save $1,200? What's the point or the purpose of it? You might say, well, because I don't want to be dependent on family when I have an emergency or because I've seen too many of my friends and family live in debt their whole lives with no emergency money set aside. You could say, I'm setting a financial goal because I'm establishing a new pattern in my life to be wise with my finances and not spend everything I make. That's how I used to be. Or you could say, because if I do this every year for the next five years, I'll have over $6,000. Or maybe because Proverbs says, 
The wise have wealth and luxury, but a fool spends whatever he gets. And I'm determined to not live like a fool anymore. That's how Roddy and I had to be. We said we're tired of being fools. Well, when you see and clarify why a goal is so important to you, it helps you stay focused all year long. So don't be vague and nonspecific. Write down what you want to achieve this year. Steve Harvey said, you've got to create vision boards, dream boards. He said, you've got to put a picture of the new car up. Put a picture of the weight you want to be. He said, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Well, I firmly believe that. In fact, just the power of writing down a vision. I heard this story years ago from T.D. Jakes. He said years ago he was, you know, he needed millions of dollars to build his church campus. So he said he went to the bank and, you know, asked them for a loan. And they said, well, we need to see where you're headed. He said, what's your plan? Then they asked him, they said, present to us a seven-year plan by next week. He said he went home and he literally wrote down what he saw in his heart. He wrote it out clearly on paper, went back to the bank, handed them what he saw in his spirit, basically, and they handed him a loan for $45 million. (laughs) Well, he knew where he was headed and he put it in writing. So I'm challenging you, write the vision and make it plain on paper. Now, why is the power of writing it down so important? Well, Dr. Gail Matthews, a psychology professor at the Dominican uh, University in California, I was going to say the Dominican Republic, (laughs) she did a study on the art and science of goal setting. She gathered 267 people together. These were men and women from all over the world, from all walks of life, including entrepreneurs, educators, healthcare professionals, artists, lawyers, bankers, all different types of people. Well, she divided the participants up into groups according to who wrote down their goals and dreams and who didn't. She discovered that those who wrote down their goals and dreams on a regular basis achieved those desires at a significantly higher level than those who did not. In fact, she found that you become 42% more likely to achieve your goals and dreams simply by writing them down on a regular basis. So the likelihood that you'll transform your desires into reality goes up even further if you share your written goals with a friend who believes in your ability to succeed. Isn't that amazing? So when the vision is clear, the results will appear. The number one sign that you're going to be successful is if you refuse to be average. Don't be like everyone else. Don't be like the 97% who never write their goals. Move up to the 3% who not only write them, but achieve them. Remember, average is as close to the bottom as it is to the top. So let's refuse to be average this year. Become a lifelong goal setter and start by writing them down. Setting goals, this is what Tony Robbins said. Setting goals is the first step at turning the invisible into the visible. Hey, I'm Terry Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Hey, if you've never subscribed to this podcast, just push the little red button right there to get consistent teaching tools and tips to help you live your dreams. Today, I want to talk about the key to reaching your goals this year. You know, the key to reaching your goals is determined by what you're willing to commit to. You'll never conquer what you refuse to commit to. You've probably heard that phrase, it only takes one diet to lose weight. Which one? The one you stick with. They all work. Just stick with one, right? Well, you know, you might be saying, yeah, well, I've set goals in the past and didn't achieve them. How do I stay committed this year? And that used to be the story of my life, but I want to share from personal experience how to stay committed. You know, you might be going, where do I even start? Well, I love this story I heard about the actor Will Smith. He said, you know, well, one day this guy was visiting his house and when he walked in, he saw this big glass wall with like 150 little index cards all over the wall. And he asked him, he said, what is that? Will Smith said, that's my next movie I'm working on. He said, you know, those are all my different scenes and I move them around to get them the way I want them. He said, every good movie has ups and downs and good characters, bad characters, conflicts, victories, things like that. And the guy looking at this said, this looks so complicated. He said, how do you even know where to start? Will Smith said, that's the easy part. He said, you always start with the final scene. He said, you decide how you want it to end and then you work towards it. Well, I think that's great advice on how to live your dreams. See, this is how God works. God declares the end from the beginning. And see, that's what your vision board is. You're declaring the end of this year 
at the beginning of the year. In fact, Jeremiah said his God's plans for you are for good and not harm to give you an expected end. So your dreams, your goals, your vision board is an expected end. It's what you want to see accomplished this year. So number one, start with the end. Start with the final scene. You know, God even said in his word, all that your eyes can see can be yours. So I think it's time you start fixing your eyes on your future. In fact, ask yourself, where do I want to be 12 months from right now? I like to actually imagine that it's December 31st of this year. And you turn to your friend and say, this has been the most amazing year of my life. Now, what would need to happen for you to say that? Whatever it is, write it down and write in the past tense. This is how I do it. I would say something like, I saved $5,000. I went on my dream trip to the Bahamas. Or you could say, I paid off my student loan of $7,000. I finished my third semester of college. I sold my first home. Or I launched my ministry. I finished my book. Write in the past tense as if you've already achieved it. In fact, I love this about Oprah Winfrey. She said she always knew that she would be a millionaire by age 32. This was back in 1987. She said, in fact, I'm going to be the richest black woman in America. Well, 19 years later, with a net worth of $2.7 billion, she's not only the richest black woman in America, but one of the richest people in the world. And she admits that she made her fortune by setting clear, ambitious goals. In fact, I heard where one guy suggests setting an alarm on your phone for three minutes. That's it. He said this forces you to write your goals down quickly rather than pondering too long and then immediately starting to figure out, you know, how am I ever going to achieve this? No, just write what comes to you in three minutes. So this limited time frame, it's going to force you to write down what's really in your heart. Number two is break your goals down. You have to break your goals down to increase your commitment. Here's an example. Most New Year's goals look like this. Lose weight, save more money, read more, get organized, spend more time with family, get closer to God, things like that. And these are great ambitions, but they're too vague, too broad, and a setup for failure. When all you need to do is break them down into practical steps. So for example, a goal to read more would look like this. What does that mean? Read 12 books by December 31st. Break it down even more. Read one book a month. Break that down even more. I'm going to read 10 pages every day. See, it increases your commitment when you have a plan attached to it. Or a goal to lose weight. Instead of just saying, I will lose weight this year. No, break it down. I will weigh my perfect weight of 115 pounds. If your current weight is, let's say, 125. By March 31st. Break it down even more. How are you going to do this? Exercise five days a week for one hour. How are we going to do that? Take a dance class, kickboxing, go walk with a friend and make it fun. So break the goal down so you see how you can achieve it. Or a goal to save money, which everybody wants to save money. But if that's all you write, it's doubtful it's going to happen. But if you clarify the goal and you say, I'm going to save $1,200 by December 31st, break it down even more. That means I got to save $100 a month. What's that look like? I'm going to save $25 every week. And then think of ways to save money. You could declutter your house, have a big garage sale, sell some stuff. You know, eBay did a report and said the average American has 50 unused items just laying around their house worth at least $3,100. So, hey, you've got some cash laying around to help you achieve your goals. But to ensure commitment to these big dreams, you have to break it down into steps. In fact, one expert suggests that after you set a big goal, this is what separates the best of the best from everyone else. They said they write down 20 to 50 things you need to do to achieve that major goal of yours. And you know, you might say, Terry, I don't have time for this. Well, I used to be that way, but do you know saying you don't have time to work on your goals is like saying, I'm content to stay where I'm at for another year and another year. And I don't believe you are or you wouldn't be watching a podcast like this. And remember, goals determine what drives you. So I'm telling you, it's worth it. Number three is set fewer goals. Stay between seven to 10 goals for the year. Most people set too many goals. I used to set like 43 goals and then I wouldn't achieve any of them. Well, you've heard the phrase, if you aim at too many targets, you miss all of them. So the top ways people lose focus is by having way too many goals to focus on. 
Research supports that seven to 10 goals is the best place to stay. Number four is set your goals in writing. The biggest mistake people make is they don't write their goals down. Now, if you ask anyone how many feel it's important to write your goals down, pretty much everybody agrees it's important, but hardly anyone does it. You know, you may have heard the story Dr. Gail Matthews, the research she did from Dominican University. She did research on goal setting and she wanted to know what was the impact of actually writing down your goals. I mean, do you really have to write them down or can you just mentally have them in your head? Well, she discovered that the very act of writing your goals down gives you a 42% greater probability of achieving the goal even if you don't do anything else. That's crazy. So it's worth it to just take the time to write it down. See, you can casually say, I'd like to have 10,000 in my savings account, but nothing happens or makes it concrete until you write it down. In fact, Darren Hardy said, you know, I get to interview the most successful people in the world. And he said, I have found two common traits in all of them. Number one, they're committed to continual learning, which is what we're doing today. Number two, they have clearly defined written goals. So there probably isn't a person watching who hasn't heard the importance of having your goals in writing, but if you walk up to the average person on the street and ask to see their written list of goals, they don't have one. In fact, 97% of American adults are trying to live their lives without clear, specific written goals. But I believe you're changing that statistic. I know when I did, it changed my whole life. So one way to really increase your drive and ambition is to write them down for 30 days straight. Now, you might say, Terry, that's crazy and time-consuming, but I promise you it's worth it, and here's why. It becomes ingrained in your subconscious mind, and you develop more determination than ever to achieve your goals. So it's worth it to write them down for 30 days. And this works for anybody, no matter what your age is. In fact, I love this story that I read about a, a young guy named Caleb. Now, his dad had him start reading success books at six years old. He said, I'm not going to pay you to take out the trash and do chores that most kids do unless I want you to grow up and be a trash collector. He said, they're the ones who get paid to take out the trash. So he said, I will pay you to learn. So he said, I will pay you $20 for every success book you read. Isn't that amazing? So by eight years old, his dad had him start writing his goals. So listen to what this kid wrote. He said, I will speak with Gary Vaynerchuk. I will do a TED Talk. I will do an event with Tony Robbins. I will make $100,000 by age 14. Then he said this, I will have 100,000 followers on Facebook. Do you know every single thing he wrote has happened? He's set to make a million dollars this year at 15 years old. Isn't that wild? So I'm just challenging you, write the vision and make it plain. Number five is set a deadline. Deadlines are motivating. They create a sense of urgency. The quickest way to get your house clean is invite company over, right? We know that. Well, many people are afraid to set deadlines to their goals because they're concerned they won't make it. That's okay, you can move the deadline. So if you have a desire to write a book, you need to assign a deadline for chapter one. Don't just say, I'm gonna write my book this year. And don't make all of your deadlines December 31st because that just promotes procrastination. Just wait until the end of the year to get everything done. So set a deadline that's going to motivate you. Let me just remind you, motivation is what gets you started. Commitment is what keeps you going. So these are proven ways to help you stay committed all year long to achieve your goals. Commitment means staying loyal to what you said you would do long after the mood you set it in has left you. Isn't that a good quote? You can do this. And I want to remind you, you must have goals to achieve your dreams. And I would love to help you. So send me your top 10 goals for this year. Number one, for accountability. And number two, so I can join my faith with yours to pray over them. So in Today, I want to show you the quickest way to improve your life and accomplish your goals this year. In fact, I'm going to share with you a few of the 30-day challenges that I've done over the years that impacted my life so much. And then just for fun, I'm going to give you a little variety to choose from. So I put together 30 different 30-day challenges in your free download that you are going to love. And I'll explain in just a second. But I want you to be like a sponge and just absorb everything you hear as if God is speaking right to you. Why? Because he is. In fact, the Bible says that God speaks in a still small voice. I'm the voice of God today. 
This is for you. So what does a sponge do? It takes it in and soaks it up. Now I want to talk about the power of a decision, specifically making a decision to grow, to challenge yourself, to push yourself to try new things. You know, I heard T.D. Jake say, your decisions are the pathway to your destiny. I wish I had an organ playing in the background. <laughs> but he said, if your decisions don't start lining up with your destiny, you're gonna miss out on God's plan. Now that's serious. So today I'm gonna bring this down to a very practical level. But first, changing your life begins with a decision to change. You know, I remember hearing someone say, nothing changes if nothing changes. I was like, that's deep, it really is. But seriously, Jim Rohn said, if you want the future to change, you've gotta change. Well, I figured out that to start the process of change doesn't have to be this massive life overhaul. It can start by giving yourself a 30 day challenge to do one thing. Now, what I love is that within 30 days, you can improve your health, you can start learning a new language, you could get control of your finances, declutter your home. Basically, during a one month challenge, you can set the course to truly change your life. That's what happened with me. Now, what I thought was just a month long goal I set for myself, it turned into transforming my life, my habits, and impacting my destiny. Now, I know that sounds pretty heavy, but let me explain. Do you remember the story in the Bible of the guy at the pool of Bethesda? And he'd been laying there for 38 years. And Jesus walked up to him and said, do you want to get well? Why would he say that? Because nothing changed in 38 years. You know, Jesus could have said, oh, bless your heart. You've been through so much here. Let me just help you up. No, he said very affirmatively, get up, <laughs> pick up your bed and walk. Get up, think about that phrase, get up. What does that mean? Nobody else can do this for you. You have to decide to get up. You have to make the decision to not wallow around another year, feeling sorry for yourself, complaining about the conditions, waiting for somebody to pick you up. Get up and take responsibility for your life. Now I promise, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just sharing with you what God had to share with me to stop living in my past, stop feeling sorry for myself, stop repeating this year what I did last year and the year before, and stop waiting until I felt motivated. No, I had to decide to start making changes in my life. And I made a decision to get up. And remember, everything starts in your mind. You have to first convince yourself and then follow up with actions. Also, let me just point this out. Making no decision is still making a decision. So I seriously started giving myself a 30 day challenge. You know, such as number one, let me just explain this. I said, I'm gonna make myself walk every single morning for at least 20 minutes. And I would keep a calendar in sight. And every single day that I kept my commitment with myself, I would mark through it, joyfully mark through it. Now this not only helped me get in shape, but it actually helped my relationship with God because I would go early in the morning and use that as my prayer time. I got closer to God than ever before in my life because of that one habit. Plus my thighs got a little smaller, <laughs> but here's the cool thing. I never stopped exercising since that first 30 day challenge back in 2001. Number two, here's another habit. I said, I'm gonna make myself read for 20 minutes a day. Now, I hated reading. I hadn't read a book since college, 11 years earlier. In fact, I was cleaning out old trunks and I found the only two books that I ever read <laughs> for pleasure. And it was a book about gymnastics and the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleader Manual. Here they are, look at this. But I started hearing that leaders are readers and you have to learn more to earn more. So I made myself set the timer on my phone and read for 20 minutes a day. Seriously, changed my life. It helped me get out of debt. It helped me learn how to market our ministry. It helped me learn the power of having a vision. Everything, it built my self-esteem, it restored my marriage. I can't even describe what all I've learned by a simple 20 minute challenge. Okay, number three, another 30 day goal was to listen to a message every morning. I can't put a price on what this habit has done for me. I have learned more gluing my eyelashes on in the morning <laughs> than I ever learned in college. 
Instead of listening to music while I get ready, I listen to podcasts that transform my thinking. And this is the easiest 30-day challenge you could ever do. Number four, declutter my house. One room at a time. Now, I found out that if I have peace in my surroundings, it leads to peace in my mind. So one of my favorite 30-day declutter challenges is to remove an item that corresponds with the day. For example, on day one, you remove one unnecessary item. On day five, you remove five items that you don't need. On day 20, you look for 20 things that you have no need for. Get this, by day 30, you will have removed or decluttered 500 unnecessary items taking up space in your surroundings. Isn't that amazing? Another 30-day challenge I wanna share because it literally changed my entire life was to write my goals for 30 days. Now, I learned from Brian Tracy that if I write my top 10 goals down every single day for 30 days, it gets programmed in my subconscious mind and you become more determined than ever to achieve your goals. And that's exactly what happened to me in 2012. The first time I did that, I achieved all 10 of my impossible looking goals. I seriously couldn't believe it. Well, now I do it every year. I set a timer on my phone, here's my phone, that says write goals so I don't forget. And every day it goes off and you're like, oh yeah, write my goals. So I could go on and on with the 30 day challenges from journaling my gratitude to drinking eight glasses of water, But the main point is that many of these have just become a part of my daily routine. Some of them for 10 years, some for 20 years, I've never stopped. But as I push myself, challenge myself with a simple 30-day goal, growing myself caused everything around me to grow. My career, my relationships, my opportunities, my salary, everything grew because I grew. So what is God telling you today? to get up and go do. This decision to start could be starting with a 30-day challenge that could change the rest of your life. So I wanna help you get started by giving you 30, 30 30-day challenges that will be fun, inspiring, they'll build your motivation and help you believe in yourself. Let me just say, you can do anything for 30 days. You can. So you can pick and choose what you wanna start with. I love how Morgan Freeman said, challenge yourself. It's the only path that leads to growth. So all you have to do to get the free download of 30 ideas is click the link in the description and start with one. Now, if you find yourself wanting to try all the challenges, I recommend choosing just one or two a month at a time. Because if you try to implement too many things all at once, you're more likely to get overwhelmed and just stop doing any of them. So pick one and get started. I hope you enjoyed this today and I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.